2010 was a year of change for the Spider-Man video game series. It got a new developer courtesy of Beanox and a welcome change from the open-world Virtual Manhattan concept that the games had pretty much built themselves on in the form of the linear beat-em-up Spider-Man Shattered Dimensions. Now comes Beanox's second outing with the wisecracking web-slinger Spider-Man Edge of Time. Things kick off in the world of 2099 where that era's very own Spider-Man, Miguel O'Hara, discovers that fellow Alchemax scientist Walker Sloan has developed a time machine to use for naturally nefarious purposes. Unfortunately, Spidey arrives on the scene far too late to stop Sloan from kicking his grand plan into gear and reshaping the course of history as he sees fit. You think that's bad? It gets a lot worse, because the amazing Spider-Man that everyone knows and loves ends up dead in this new timeline, and so it's up to his futuristic counterpart to set things right. Now given that this is a sequel to Shattered Dimensions, you'd naturally think that, as is usually the trend, things would get bigger and more ambitious, and in one way, that's true. While Shattered Dimension's story revolved around what was basically a pseudo-crossover-slash-fetch quest, Edge of Time's plot hinges on the concept of quantum causality. Think of it like the butterfly effect, where one hitch in the flow of time causes everything else to change around you. What the shock? What happened? The elevator I'm in just changed into a closet. Sadly, there's a lot wrong with this game, and the biggest mistake, aside from scaling things back even further from Shattered Dimensions by setting the entire game within the space of a single building, is that it doesn't realise this concept terribly well. The vast majority of instances where the flow of time changes are scripted, with very few, if any, major exceptions. The game also drops hints at all of these wonderfully different versions of pre-existing characters, but that idea is barely scratched as well. I work for Alchemax. You're saying that's somehow wrong? Completely. At this point in time, you earn a living taking news pictures for J. Jonah Jameson. <laughs> the late night ranting TV news guy? <laughs> Forget it. Most of the basic controls from Shattered Dimensions, like using X and Y for light and heavy melee attacks, tapping up on the directional pad to activate your spider sense, and holding the right trigger to web swing, are still present and accounted for, along with some minor changes like pressing B instead of the right bumper to shoot projectile webs. However, the spider sense is rarely useful since it's not easy to get lost within the building, and web swinging is heart-wrenchingly cut down to the point where it's practically unnecessary. Instead, players will spend their time web-zipping from point A to point B. Meanwhile, the left trigger's dodge mechanic has also been swapped out in favour of activating each Spider-Man's unique ability. The Amazing Spider-Man can briefly trigger hypersenses that allow him to move through enemies and obstacles unharmed, while 2099 can produce holographic duplicates to distract enemies. Last but not least, pressing both analog sticks once you've collected enough chronal energy creates a time paradox that temporarily slows down everything inside its radius. The camera problems that come hand in hand with wall crawling are also present, although mercifully, they're nowhere near as bad this time around. It's good to see that Beanox is learning its lesson in that regard. I should note here and now that one of the game's highest points is its voice acting, with the two Spider-Men once again being voiced by actors that have played the title character in other mediums. Joshua Keaton from The Spectacular Spider-Man, responsible for voicing Ultimate Spider-Man in Shattered Dimensions, replaces Neil Patrick Harris as The Amazing Spider-Man, while Christopher Daniel Barnes, who breathed life into the 1990s animated version of Spidey, as well as Spider-Man Noir in Shattered Dimensions, fills the role left behind by Dan Gilvezan as the new voice of Spider-Man 2099. Okay, let's go over the starter procedures. The slow down, Parker, it's not that simple. Did you fire up the quark enhancers? Activate the tachyon relays? Yes, yes, I did all that. No, you just... Uncouple the Heisenberg compensators. Yes, of course I did. Oh, shock it, no, I didn't. The banter between these two heroes really does keep the game entertaining, at least in my opinion, and speaking as someone who's read the 2099 books, I must say that I was really happy that this particular incarnation of Miguel O'Hara is a bit more in line with how he is in his comics. He's much more serious, hardly ever cracks jokes, and is understandably frustrated with his namesake's complete and utter inability to keep the hell out of harm's way.
it's quite the contrast with the previous game's version of the character, who was essentially the traditional Spider-Man persona in a new set of clothes. Then again, I guess the sudden change in attitude is to be expected when you've got Spider-Man 2099's creator Peter David penning the script. In regards to the rest of the cast, Katie Sagoff, best known for her work in the updated Battlestar Galactica series, gives a sultry yet sadistic performance as the Black Cat 2099. Is this what you're looking for? And surprisingly enough, Val Kilmer is almost unrecognizable as Walker Sloan. Hello Joseph, run a final check and initiate security bioscans. Graphically, this game stands apart from its predecessor by adopting a traditional 3D approach, and while I admit to missing the cel-shaded look of Amazing Spidey's world from Shattered Dimensions, this change provides a much-needed sense of consistency, especially given the picture-in-picture -picture style of the Spider-Man's interactions. The environments throughout the game are suitably color-coded for the player's convenience as well, with bright orange representing the present day and dark blue representing the future. Because the fact that both Spideys are wearing different costumes clearly wasn't enough of a visual distinction. As I said earlier, there's a lot wrong with Edge of Time. Beanox really seems to have knocked it into their heads that scaling things back is the way to go for a sequel. For example, while you do have the option to upgrade your skills, there won't really be much of a need for it since you can just use your basic move set to plow through the game if you really want to. In fact, there's a very distinct 1990s feeling that lingers around you as you beat your enemies senseless, right down to the need to collect keys to pass through certain doors. Needless to say, it can get very dull very quickly, and the only real break from this comes from occasional freefall sections and boss battles. Furthermore, the game ultimately just doesn't leave you feeling like Spider-Man, and I think if there's any game that the pro-open world camp is going to latch onto and beat the living shit out of, it's this one. You really want a five-hour lecture on temporal paradoxes? Sure, why not? As it turns out, looks like I have all the time in the world.